Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio. We're here with Rashid Masharawi. Um, firstly, congratulations on having Palestine Stereo here. This is now your third film at TIFF. Yes, is it is. Right? Yes, thank you. So, how's it feel? Five years since Layla's birthday. How's it feel being back in in Canada with a film that speaks to Canada mm -hmm. in a sense? Mm -hmm. It's been, in general, I like to come here because it's been for me. It's a very important festival. Especially, I like the audience in this festival. Once the the festival it's mixed with the city, then we have this real audience who watch the film, who comments, who involved, which is great. Besides this, it's a, it's a filmmakers and industry, and to show also our stories here, it's important. Well, that's 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 something that's true for you, but not true for everybody. Obviously, people who live and make films in Los Angeles and. Uh, elsewhere in in societies, it's not. Um, it might be fun and it might be important to them, but it's certainly not a life statement or a, mm -hmm. a statement about where they've that where you know what they're going through on a daily basis politically. Mm -hmm. um, for you, you kind of mesh both, mm -hmm. both the the politics of the situation and the narratives and these kind of human stories of these of these people living in these these places mm -hmm. how fine a line is that for you like whether to be you know to try not to be too political or to, to pull back when do you pull back mm -hmm. I don't think uh, about the, the politic I mean for us we are not really dealing with that because it's there I mean we are not trying to push it even because whatever you will do it's there beside that we are trying to touch our life our daily life and it's not, it's difficult to take the political aspect out of this. It exists, but I'm trying to tell a human story, love stories, uh, to deal with us. It's mean with ourselves as a community, as a nation. Yeah, well, semi and stereo in the film, they don't have a choice really of where to live. In fact, that's one of their big limitations. Mm -hmm. For you, you probably could go anywhere, live anywhere. Why do you choose to live where you live? Why do you choose to go through what you go through on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. I don't think for me also I have the choice to go wherever. It's mean it's not the choice that I could have the, the documents to go wherever the visa. Yeah. It's mean me myself I try uh, three four times to get out of Palestine and to live in Europe or in Arabic countries. Somehow I found myself each time there in Palestine and Ramallah and Gaza. Slowly slowly I get back. I think this is the conflict between carrying all this history and memory and being part of the life and thinking about uh, dreams and future and uh, normal life. Yeah. Uh, but it's not easy. It's, I mean, it's not the papers. <laughs> it's inside. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's where you... So, and that's what, they, the, what, what the film is largely about. It's where do you choose to build a life, mm -hmm. and and so for you, whether that choice seems voluntary or involuntary, obviously it's a strong consideration for you mm -hmm. and the way you think about things. Mm -hmm. um, with these guys, I mean, they have homelessness and essentially a little bit of hopelessness at the start of the film, and then. But what I like about that is that it's almost like homelessness plus hopelessness equals let's go to Canada. <laughs> you know? And so it's fun, like coming to TIFF and having that, you know, yeah. potentially be the reaction of the audience. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. To see it as this great escape. I had it yesterday during the screening when things also get into Canadian things. I got some reactions you could have only here, and this with these people and with this screen. But for me, Canada, it represents uh, more uh, the outside. It means the outside of Palestine. Maybe because of the Palestinians, when they think to about immigration, they think about America, Canada, Scandinavian countries, because usually they did immigration to, to these places. But for the story, it's the, the outside. It's to dream about normal life. From their own point of view, I believe in Canada you could have also people with problems. You could have homeless here. You could have yeah. other problems. But to look at this from Palestinian refugees after the, this attack and think about better life, it looks the freedom, the dream for yeah. them. Um, you kind of like talking about these different countries and different cities, 
you know, I recognize on the film, it, it mentions Palestine, but also Tunisia as a partner on the film, and France, and Norway, and the Emirates, and Italy, and Switzerland. How do all those different partners play mm -hmm. into this product? Mm -hmm. It started uh, Palestine, Tunis, because me and my producer, Habib Atiya, was Cinity Films, and uh, me in, in Palestine. The way how we did Layla's birthday, my previous film. And we started to work together to interest other people to join uh, this production. You can find many names, but it's not a big budget. It mean everybody a little, which is make it difficult to finance this kind of uh, films. Once you have one or two addresses to give you enough money to make the film, it's easier, quicker, and less dealing with all the strategy of financing and co-production things. But for certain projects like this one, you need to get a little from each place to manage to, to do it. So it takes us one year and a half, Habib Atiyah and me, to manage all this co-production. Yeah. Is that why it's been five years since we've seen you? Is just putting together the logistics, or did you feel like you took a little bit of a break promoting Layla's birthday for a while? Mm, not really. The reality is that Layla's birthday two years after here was running in many countries and in yeah. many festivals. It takes time to write the script, it takes time to finance uh, the film, and in between I did two documentaries. And what's it like, just the logistics of filming um, in Ramallah and places like that? Is, is there is it easier because it's not done as often, or is it harder because it's not done as often? It's hard. It's hard even, it's difficult, to, to especially when you have a fiction, not documentary, then you have schedule and then you need to shot in this scene in the morning, in the afternoon, and next week you have to plan everything. It's difficult when the city itself or the place itself, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow it will be new intifada, maybe it will be closure, and maybe you cannot manage the rest of your own day. But somehow, out of our experience for many years to make films in the area, we know how to deal with that. We make plan A, plan B, even plan C and D sometimes uh, to manage the production. And also the, the culture of the area, the mentality of the people. It's not, we don't have filmmaking atmosphere every day in the city. Yeah. So to control uh, the streets, you need a lot of uh, security and guards, uh, for, technically, for yeah. the sound, for managing the scenes. So it is difficult. Do you feel like the people feel that your voice is an important one because you're getting to tell it to such a large audience around the world? With the time, yes. Lately, I think uh, once I have uh, uh, films in, in Cannes and Venice and here, and uh, it's mean the Palestinian people are dealing with the news, dealing with media. They are connected to anything related to Palestinian stories because of the situation. Yeah. So the new now, what's this mean when there is a success of Palestinian film and the world see our stories? That's mean they know what this means. And it makes it also easier for us to manage our filming in, in Palestine. I'm sure you're a great inspiration for a lot of people there, especially like youngsters who see this as an opportunity to kind of bridge these horizons. Um, as well. Mm -hmm. Each film for me, it's a workshop for Palestinian young film filmmakers. Also this film, also Layla's birthday. Uh, especially people who just study cinema, who they try to do their first short film. So they got training in, in this kind of film. Uh, in, in Palestine Stereo, I had around 26 people who was working just for uh, as a workshop to study cinema, to get experience. Right. And after the film Leila's birthday, five of my crew made their own first short film. It must which be is, okay. Which is great, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for coming and spending a few minutes with us. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank Cheers. you very much.